What's up, YouTubes? It's too many choices. Back again. Found another guy that decided he wanted to build some machine guns. And I'm curious, what do you think makes an AR-15 into a machine gun? Is it the selector? Is it the hammer? Is it the trigger? As the ATF states it, it is the third hole, or lack of a third hole, as you can see. There are no third hole here that decides whether or not an AR-15 is a machine gun or not. So I want you to take a look at this quick video. I'll come back and give you my thoughts on it. I think this guy was pushing the limits and he was clearly a dumbass, but hey, you do you, man. So take a look, let me know what you think. I'll be back. Channel 2 investigates the world of black market weapons. A Conroe man was recently sentenced to federal prison for making and selling machine guns without a federal license. Uh, the case was investigated by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. Investigator Robert Arnold got an inside look at an undercover operation spanning from Nebraska to our area and heard why federal agents had to act quickly to stop these guns from getting into the hands of criminals. This is a glimpse into the world of black market weapons. He was very open about what he could do and when he could do it. Assistant Special Agent in charge of the ATF's Houston office, Mickey French, is talking about the man seen in this undercover video, Michael Lee Price. Offered to make machine guns, silencers, short barreled rifles. Last summer, Price was arrested after the ATF got a tip he was not shy about telling people he could make untraceable machine guns and was looking for buyers. The undercover has to work fast. He has to gain the confidence of the seller. If you guys didn't buy him, somebody was going to. Exactly. Undercover ATF agents did just that, set up a meeting with Price and cut a deal to buy fully automatic weapons without serial numbers engraved. No serial numbers means the weapons can't be traced to a manufacturer or seller. ATF then learned that while Price lived at an apartment complex in Conroe, he was not making the guns here. He was making them in the state of Nebraska. Why Nebraska? Uh, Mr. Price was making these weapons at his parents' home in Nebraska. French says Price got the know-how and the equipment to make the guns online. Basically allowed it to him to teach himself. That's something Channel 2 Investigates has shown you before. Buying what you need for a do-it-yourself semi-automatic rifle can be found online legal as long as you keep the gun for personal use. The difference with Price is he was building fully automatic guns. Building one of these requires a federal license, paying a special tax, engraving a serial number, and registering the weapon with the government along with several other restrictions. The ATF says Price did none of that. Court records show Price already had a criminal record and was in serious debt. The ATF had another concern. They didn't want Price driving hundreds of miles from Nebraska with a trunk full of untraceable machine guns. Making sure that they didn't get lost, stolen, or anything happened to them. To shorten the distance, the ATF set a meeting in Colorado. That's where video shows Price selling the guns to an undercover agent. Price was quickly arrested and charged with illegal possession of a machine gun, possession of an unregistered machine gun, and engaging in the business of firearms without a license. These were the weapons the ATF actually bought. That is correct. The ATF confiscated everything, and agents say Price's goal was to expand his weapon-making business. There was still one more question. Who did he think he was selling to exactly? It was relayed that he was going to be making these machine guns, silencers, short barrel rifles for a criminal organization. So this wasn't just some poor guy who was down on his luck and was looking to make a quick buck. This is somebody who had no problem selling to criminals. And he didn't have a problem selling to criminals that openly uh, admitted that they were about to start a war. Court records show Price pleaded guilty to three charges and was sentenced to 37 months in federal prison. If you'd like to get a look at some of the documents in this case, head to the Investigate section of Click2Houston.com. Robert Arnold, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Okay, so that guy was arrested for multiple felonies. He basically ended up pleading guilty to illegal possession of a machine gun, possession of an unregistered machine gun, and acting as an FFL for attempting to sell the AFT, those machine guns. Now, I don't know where you guys stand on it, but where I sit, you shouldn't be selling machine guns to criminals. And he basically admitted that he was willing to sell them to start a gang war and all kind of other crazy shit. So, as a Second Amendment proponent, I believe all Americans have a right to own machine guns. But again, as the court sits now, and as the AFT has enforced it, the NFA 
says you cannot act as a dealer, manufacturer, etc., etc. And the moment he attempted to sell those weapons or transfer them, he became somebody that was under their jurisdiction. So that guy got 37 months in jail and pled guilty. So, I mean, normally you think with him selling 15 machine guns or whatever it was, that he would have gotten years in jail. But because he pled guilty and pled it down, that's what they do. They throw the book at you, offer you to get like 10,000 years for what they can charge you with, and then they hope that you will plead it down so that they don't have to take that crap to court. That's why the feds have like a 90 plus, 95 plus conviction rate or whatever. So, I mean, the guy was an idiot. Yeah, I, I don't know. But the funny and interesting thing again is, all of those were actually short-barreled AR-15s. And if you look at them, they all had the A2 flash hiders. They were inco incorrectly clocked. They were all like off to the side or weirdly placed, but that's beside the point. But the fact that they all had that third hole drilled and he had clearly installed actual auto sears and they were machine guns meant that he had violated the NFA in a way that they could actually reach him so I just want to know what you guys think I in my opinion second amendment protects you owning and possessing but again it doesn't speak to selling and so that's kind of where they, they get you it doesn't speak to anything beyond keep and bear. Now the right to acquire is somewhere in there and it's wrapped up in there but as it sits now with Congress trying to say that any type of commerce in those firearms is their jurisdiction until the Supremes come down and start you know, smacking that around which has kind of started happening I believe with them and the APA case where they've kind of started limiting Chevron. We'll see what happens in the next few years but the moment he started selling things he became a dealer or a manufacturer and a dealer trying to sell them out to other people so that guy was just an idiot in my opinion let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll try to find some more of these interesting cases for you guys to take a look at peace